Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent. This is Flat Earth Q&A, emails number 105, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. I'll do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. This one's called Theodolite for Sun Moon Locating. Hi, Mark. Thanks for all the hard work. First of all, I appreciate it hugely. I've gone back and started listening to all your shows again to catch up on ones I missed. And on many episodes, either in an email read by you or subject matter expert interviews, I keep hearing this concept repeated about various ways to triangulate the position of the sun and moon, thereby determining, determining the exact distance to each in the sky. I came across this iPhone app when I first got involved in Flat Earth as I was a professional researcher by trade and studio photographer with extensive IT background for over 25 years. I fell in love with knowing everything I could about the whole awakened world I found. Love to chat sometime about what I found on some NASA archival images, but perhaps a later date. My travel images are way more fun anyhow, but I digress. The app I'm referring to is called Theodolite. Any professional surveyor will know what those are, and they vary in price up to the three to four grand range for good ones. It allows you to look at an image, mark a point, look at a second point, and know the distance from A to B, all the angles, etc., and a lot more. The iPhone version is around $10 for the Pro Bundle. No, I don't get a cut either, wish I did, but it has a group function. So at a predetermined time, a group of people all over the plane could target the center of a visible moon, shoot an image with all the encoded information I sampled there for you, and be shared with the group. If only three people did it, it would produce a three-dimensional pyramid-shaped object on the plane. At the top would be the moon in a Mercedes-Benz star shape. It would include all the relevant angles and distances to and from each in the group, and with that data, you could determine the exact height of the moon at its apex, regardless of where you are on Earth. Your attitude would be factored in already. Shoot four images of the moon, top, bottom, left, and right, and now you have an exact diameter as well. Repeat for the sun or any other object that was concurrently seen by all the observers. I have proposed this several times over the last couple of years, but not a lot of good response, although I see others saying the same thing here and there. I know the ground-based positioning system in phones won't be exact, but it's cheaper and way easier than using a sextant. In, and it could be a cool way to share in an active, real-time research project, not just meme slinging. Hope to hear from anyone interested. I can be found on several of the Flat Earth groups out there. Thanks again. Blessings and my appreciation for all you do. Please keep me anonymous or use uh, my, my FE persona, which is Scott Price. Cool. And all right. So if anyone wants to get a hold of this guy, because I, apparently I can't give out his, um, his email address, l let me know and I will, uh, I will forward it off to him. This one's called, Ooh, this looks like fun. Live discussion program guest invitation. Dear Mark, my name is Oscar Brierly. I am a first year film student at university of Westminster. We are making a short discussion program on this topic of Flat Earth and would like to invite you to appear and debate the topic with someone who holds a different view. We would be delighted if you would agree to this and should be able to cover transport costs to London. The debate will take place on the 8th of January at the University of Westminster Harrow, 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 Harrow Campus. If you are interested, please contact me at, and kind regards, Oscar Brierly. So yeah, absolutely. Be happy to. Again, that's all I ask. Is that you can fly me in, put me up for the night, and I'll talk to anybody you want to uh, about the topic. So great that somebody in London was willing to do this. And uh, if it materializes, I will let people know as we get closer. Because there's a lot of flat earth people in London that I would, I would love to meet that I haven't gotten a chance to yet. So that's awesome. This one's called NPR 177, Great Interview. 
Mark, this is okay to read on air. Today is uh, November 30th. Congrats on a great interview with NPR yesterday. Another home run for the Sarge. Nice short answers for tough questions. This is also probably a good interview for your Flat Earth shortlist. A quick intro to beginners in researching FE. Take care, Jack Frost. And yeah, thanks, Jack, very much for that. I uh, had limited time. I only had, I think, less than 20 minutes with them on air and i was prefaced by a guy from the new york times and i was followed by a psych psychiatrist which was interesting and the three of us didn't get to talk together but it was still a fun interview and they told me ahead of time they said look we don't have a lot of time so try to keep your answers from anywhere from like 30 to 45 seconds and i said yep can do and so i just cranked them out as as fast as i could and and they were it was good to know because a lot of people when they interview me they don't even tell me how much time i have so in this case the these guys were super professional and and we got all the um all the info that they needed pretty quick this one's called fe clues mark i just noticed that you added more fe clues videos to your series i could not only find up to I could only find up to 14, which I'm really excited to watch the last two, 13 and 14, but do you have more than 14? With all this YouTube censorship, it's hard to find any FE material. Search engines keep hauling one to the same videos at the top of the list. Yeah, thank you, Mark. That's from Tony Galaviz, from the founder of the Flat Earth Liberation Movement. <laughs> the people's the people's front of, of Flat Earth or the um, front Earth, uh, Flat Earth People's Front. That's a Monty Python reference, by the way. Uh, yeah, no, right now the Flat Earth Clues does stop at 14 for various reasons. One is that, I b believe it or not, once people get into the Flat Earth Clues, which is why I'm getting like the freshman recruiter, is that they run off into the, the Flat Earth rabbit holes and with all the others, so much content by so many great people. I get a member when, uh, when we do conferences, I'm only one of, uh, what, we have 20 speakers now? And that's just the, the people that were chosen. I mean, there's tons of people that have content out there, thousands and thousands and thousands of people that, that have great content on YouTube, enough that you could spend an entire lifetime and never get through it all at this point. So when there's more demand for Flat Earth Clues, I will put out more. Uh, but right now I'm, I'm doing other things. 2019, yeah, I might sneak in a couple of clues in 2019. Uh, but I'm going to be kind of focusing on other things a lot. I'll, I'm also going to be focusing on promoting the, uh, the documentaries, which are being made as we speak. But thank you for that. This one's called Neil deGrasse Tyson. More women are coming forward. And apparently, let's see here. There's an article. Two more women accuse Neil deGrasse Tyson of sexual misconduct. Conduct. Oh, wow. 2018 is just a brutal brutal year for this and let's see two more women including a fellow astronomer say neil degrasse dyson is guilty of inappropriate sexual conduct dr caitlin allers associate professor of physics and astronomy at bucknell university and yeah apparently he it was an after party back in 2009 so it wasn't like it was he was back in university hmm well we'll see what happens there uh, I, I have mixed feelings in that regard. You know, I, I, I'm a huge champion of women, uh, and uh, but I hate to. See, well, you know what? That's I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm a huge champion of women. He doesn't get a pass for for various reasons. Moving on, this one's called Mail from Holland. Hi, Mark. You can't say my name on air, even if you have a hope of pronouncing it. Ha <laughs> ha. Funny. Uh, but what you can mention is my Reddit nickname, Mara Cassandra, A.K. Mara Kass. Don't say I'm from that country, this particular country either. The on-air mail begins here. No, wait, I'm just going to tell you my story and then you can just use the information as you wish. Okay, let's do this. Uh, six months ago, I joined Reddit and started posting on what I thought were flat earth subreddits, but turned out to be troll reddits. I eventually made it on some closed FE subreddits, but even there, ball trolls came to downvote you and sometimes succeed in trolling it anyway. One of the troll subs regarding Flat Earth has mods that have up and quit or something, and I have been there acting like it's a legit Effie sub and kicked ball troll ass in the discussion. Good for you. 
I block all trolls and everyone who persists in denial and is therefore a waste of my time. I have become famous. They have dedicated a sub to me uh, regarding blocked by Mara. Get dragged into discussions on other lists anyway. Have made lots of enemies and have not been proven wrong, which of course is not possible as the earth is flat and I can prove it. But Reddit has this pain in the ass feature where if you have negative karma on a sub, my karma is gobs and gobs overall, by the way, for my other lists, your posts get hidden and you get put on a timer. So it takes you an hour to answer five comments. I've complained to Reddit about it to no avail. I've seen one FE come in and he was a new account and within two days it had 150 negative karma. He hasn't posted since and I suspect it may not be possible for him to post. So please, if you would like to extend an invitation to your audience to join uh, our, forget, forgive me, I'm not in Reddit. So it's r slash flat earth to help me out some and upvote my comments. You may check out uh, around edit and the flat earth community there. I really am the famous Mara Cass, but tried, uh, tired. I'm sorry, of suffering the wrath of the NASA censoring ball troll wolf pack. My posts should be more visible. I'm being suppressed as hard there as you are on YouTube search. Just 10 people coming around on a regular basis to upvote me and the few other FE there would solve the problem. They are also more welcome to support and populate the closed subs. Uh, are not a globe, uh, are the world is flat and r slash r flat world to counter all the down votes we get there reddit gangs up on us and we should gang up back and that's from mara Cass. cool thank you I, unfortunately i've never actually been I, i've never really hung out and, and reddit so i don't know much about it but anyone that does please go in and help them help them out if you do have the time this one's called hello uh, good day, and how are you doing today? I have a business transaction worth of US $10.5 million. Oh, I see what's happening here. That I would like to assist, would like you to assist me. Meanwhile, I will furnish you with more details when you get back to me through my private email. Email. <laughs> Best regards, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> And it's blind copied and sent to undisclosed recipients. And literally the, the title of the email is in all caps, hello. And yes, I did read that deliberately. It just, it staggers me that these just keep getting out there. Billions of these things go out every day. And it's just amazing. Uh, yeah, you think our civilization is more refined and, and uh, we're better. We're better nowadays than we used to be. No, not so much. Uh, this one's called, wow. Mark, the last few years I've been asking and asking and asking questions. There is so much confusion and cover up and deception in the world. I've been working on my own website about it. It actually makes me feel so depressed about the things I'm finding about out about our corrupt liber, blah, 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 leaders and the cover ups. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't add up. When I speak to people about these things, I am considered crazy. How do you cope? Cheers, Quentin Kidd. Uh, and the last name is spelled K-I-D-D, -D, which is weird because I actually knew, you think that's an odd name, right? No, I actually knew someone uh, who had a last name of Kid, K-I-D-D, -D, long time ago. Anyway, uh, how do I, how do I deal with it? I, I try to stay optimistic. I, I have hope for humanity. I try to, you know, all the cliches, you know, glass half full, try to find the silver lining, uh, but more than that, I, I see the potential in human beings. I think they have, um, the capacity to to do wonderful uh kind acts and that we could again we're yeah we're coming down to this fork in the road on one side is the potential golden age where we all re realize our purpose and what we can what we're, what we're capable of and the other side a horrible apocalypse where everything just burns and i no one wants to think of that everyone it, people naturally want to do good things I, I firmly believe this but we get stuck in vicious cycles and of course you know how we're brought up you know if you're brought up in a negative household it, it can be very very difficult but yeah that's that's how i do it i was i was raised in a, on a rural island i was sheltered from a lot of things and was exposed to the evil of the world very slowly to where I, you know, even to this day, I, I think that we can turn this around. And maybe it's a fantasy, maybe it's a movie, I, I don't know. 
but it's, uh, I, I, I'm not going to give up hope. Ho- hope springs eternal. There you go. That's my pep talk for this morning. This one's called, it's a flat, 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 flat world. Hi, Mark. Just finished writing a comedic flat earth novel, which I have attached to this email. I know you are very busy and probably won't have time to read it. So I've attached a synopsis as well as an appetizer. If you find any errors, please let me know. Would be grateful if you don't pass it on to anyone else. It will be going live on Amazon in the next few days. Hope you appreciate the appropriated film title. One of the greatest films of all time, uh, what he's talking about, it's a mad, 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 mad world from the 1960s, and I don't have it in front of me, uh, but a lot of great character actors in that movie, and if you want to find you want to find a great 60s Americana movie about where, you know, <laughs> what our mood was like in the early 60s, there you go. Uh, and more references are included within the text, along with some favorite TV shows. Keep up the good work. By the way, did you know, according to a recent video, I saw we were in a cult? The opposition is very, getting very, very worried. Yeah, it's true. I, I knew they were going to paint us kind of in the cult thing anyway, because uh, there are a lot of earmarks that flat Earth could blossom into really a potentially new religion. Although we don't have Bibles and we don't have robes and there's no chanting, as far as I know. Uh, but yeah, it, some of the language we use does have kind of a, um, a religious feel to it, but it also has a, like a military feel to it. And it also, I think more than anything, it has a university feel to it. It feels like, uh, you know, this weird pseudo campus that's sprawled out across everywhere, across, across all the countries and um, all, all, you know, it doesn't, doesn't care about um, gender or race or religious preference. Uh, all it cares about is the truth. And that's, that's what I, that's what I feel it is. Again, Flat Earth University. Uh, let's see. This one's called Contact. Hi, Mark. I just finished your latest Strange World 174 episode. Couldn't help admiring the young lady at the beginning with the beautiful voice. Could you forward my email to her? I'd like to get to know her in a gentlemanly way if she is willing. <laughs> Thanks, Kirk. Uh, yeah, her name, she's, she's actually a hardcore flat earther and she's been around for a long time and I will make sure she gets this email. I will put this in my to-do pile, uh, but her name is Michelle and she lives in the Bay area up in California. She's very, very nice. And yes, she's got one of the brightest smiles I've ever seen in my life. And she incredibly uh, photogenic in that regard. So where she, you know, every, every photo she's in, it's just a super bright smile and really blonde hair. And she's, she's awesome. She's really, really great. I, I like her a lot. I got a chance to see her again when I was out in um, Denver and uh, yeah, she's even better in real life. Oh, she's awesome. This one's, oh yeah, I'm sorry, out of context. Uh, the beginning of Strange World 174, uh, I put a video of her singing the beginning opening lines of New York, New York, which I like to sing in my Strange World stuff anyway, to a guy from um, uh, New York, also named Mark, but with a C. And she just put it out on, uh, the, the, we have a little chat thing inside of uh, Skype, a little private chat thing called Marky Mark and the Funky Munch, which I I hate the name because I was never a fan of Marky Mark and the Funky Munch. But she put that, she did a selfie video and put it in there and I, I had to grab it. I just had to. And I, I knew the second I saw it that I was going to put it at the beginning of Strange World 174. And that you would only, it's only going to be at 174. I'm, I'm, most of the time I, I try to stay with a standard thing, but every once in a while I'll put in a, a, a different kind of a unique uh, intro to the uh, to the episode when it goes on YouTube. All right, this one's called Flat Earth Inc. Montana. Mark, I saw an article in the Bozeman Daily Chronicle about this company. I don't know if any of the founders or staff are flat earthers, but if any of them are, they might be worth interviewing. They have the degrees and expertise that most globe ignoramuses, <laughs> okay, interesting choice of words there, uh, look for when they only consider words from the lab code. Check it out. Here is the link to the staff info. Also, please send me the five, the 12, and the guide. Oh, there he goes. Uh, blessings and thank you for all you do. And that's from Jeremy. Again, if you want me to send you the five questions and the survival guide and the 12 picks, 
but try to put it at the beginning of the email because otherwise you you will get it late because i i when i read it at the beginning of the email it's like i'm i'm compelled i have to send it off immediately but at the end of the email it's like oh now it goes into my to-do pile and now i have to send it to you and with see this guy this guy knew what to do this one's called request for the slides that's the title of the email which means i'm he's already got it hi mr s that's new Please, can you send me copies of the 12 slides and any other good stuff that I keep hearing people ask for? Loving your work. Also, just want to check how the whole use of your YouTube videos works. I am in the process of building a kind of tube site for all things Flat Earth and would love to mirror your content on there if possible. The site will be imaginatively called flatearth.im. I know who saw that coming. Cheers, Steve Lawrenson. He's in the Isle of Man in UK. And yeah, anyone that wants to use my stuff, it's Creative Commons license. You can grab whatever you want out of YouTube and put it on whatever you want. You can edit, you can chop it up and do whatever. It's it, Most of it is Creative Commons license. Now, of course, if you put it on there and it's got copyrighted music, then you, know, you, won't, you won't get any nickels for it, but it, it won't, shouldn't be blocked. I'm, pre I'm pretty good about going through my videos every couple of months and making sure that nothing is blocked. In fact, I just had to re-upload a bunch of Strange World episodes from the uh, 80s series uh, that like 80, 82, 83, 80, 45, because the couple artists, Fleetwood Mac and ACDC, decided they were going to copyright some stuff. And so they were blocking, which was fine. I just removed the songs and put them back up. Uh, just keep that in mind. If you're going to use some of my stuff, you might want to listen to the whole thing to make sure that, you know, but you'll know, you'll get a message saying, YouTube will say, sorry, um, you know, you can put it up on your channel, but you're not going to get nickels. And who, most of you guys aren't going to monetize anyway, so it doesn't matter. This one's called, ooh, this is a fun one. Mail access deactivation. I love these. And I, I'm going to point out the flaws in this one. Dear user, okay, there's your first flaw. I'm not even using my name. To finish verification about this email account, which you don't even say what email account, we just need to make sure this email address is yours. No period. Uh, your two incoming mails from your contacts were placed on pending status due to the recent upgrade. Could have written that sentence entirely better. Uh, click link to colon verify your account now or we will deactivate it <laughs> that's that's what the link is called oh these guys are terrible and it goes to uh let's see elite fitness something performance summit.com blah 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 and the email finishes if verification is not performed within 24 hours we will be forced to deactivate your account mail system administrator team 2018 Mm -hmm. That's one of the worst ones ever. I've, I mean, they're, it's just awful. There's no, there's no logos. I mean, come on, dress it up, do something. I mean, that's that's some of the worst solicitation I've ever seen. I can't believe anyone would fall for that. I mean, it would be very, very soft. Okay, so here's here's a much better one. All right, and I know I probably shouldn't be reading these, but I I enjoy them sometimes because I I was there when these things first started coming out. Because remember back in well we won't get into it that's a whole nother story this one's called important information about your account and go and goes a little something like this right so it's sent by a mr williams ajala right but and it's not even sent to me it's sent to apparently elizabeth leak and it's and it has an xfinity it's cut and paste you know there's all sorts of fun stuff so it says xfinity we have date, updated your our comcast privacy policy for our email internet voice and home automation services as an xfinity customer i'm looking for the flaws here ready it's pretty good so far your privacy is important to us we want to let you know that we've updated our privacy policy to make it clearer and more concise you are advice and there you go we're not talking about all words if you see a spelling mistake like that it should be you are advised and it says you are advice to please update your xfinity account information here and you're supposed to click to avoid your account been disabled spell checker should be bean thank you for being an xfinity customer sincerely customer service and then the standard uh, comcast stuff below so yeah much better effort but no no thanks at least they got the xfinity right but i know that was just a, a mail blast and they didn't know all right let's get to a serious email here let's do this one possibility of an actual class for flat earth science 
Uh, hello, Mark. We are a group of students whose teachers keep telling us the earth is round, which we don't believe. And we were wondering if we could interview you over the phone to organize our system of belief and get answers to some of our teachers' questions. And that's from Tobias Hild. Yeah, you bet I will. So I already wrote him back and said, thumbs up, man. Whatever. I'll, you know me. I've done interviews with junior high newspapers. So whoever wants to talk to me about this, I am willing to talk to him at this point. I've, I think I've covered pretty much the gamut from junior high newspapers up to major networks. Yep, we'll do it. This one's called Flat Earth Test in Jest, meaning it's a joke. Hey, Mark, I don't know if you'll find this funny, but I thought it was. If we move all the people to one side of the flat earth, will we prove it's flat? Because it's it'll tilt, right? <laughs> funny how does the flat earth stay level why don't we tilt what what would happen if we moved more weight or density to one area i love flat earth because the questions it makes me ask cheers pollination and his actually real name is paul sinclair i think it is anyway and yeah uh of course and i know he's joking but the the bigger thing is there is why people think that the flat earth is suspended in space and that is because the space conditioning is so thick and, and so repetitive over, you know, since you were six years old, that by the time you get to, you know, be I don't know, 30, you believe in space and you can't, you can't let go of space. So even if the earth, earth is flat, there's only one place you can put it in because you just, your imagination has been stunted. You, you know, it's like, why can't it be a snow globe on God's desk? Why can't it be? That's pretty easy, right? I mean, we do this with things all the time. We have ant farms. And what do you think? Do the ants believe in space? No. Actually, they probably don't believe in much anyway. All right. This one's called Hello. Oh, my Lord. She put the whole thing in the title. I see. I didn't even realize you could put a full paragraph in the title of an email. So there is no content. Well, there is one word in content, but we'll get to it. The, the email is called Hello. I'm a flat earther, but I have one question. If the earth is flat, then how, for example, does China have a different sunset time when America does? And what about the boat? The boat? When you're on a sailboat and you say you drift into sea, why do you not see the boat when it goes farther off? Again, I'm a flat earther. No, you are not. <laughs> and I fully believe the earth is flat. So if you would please further back m m up my explanation so I you didn't give an explanation so I can maybe prove my peers wrong. Thank you so much. Please reply. And that's from Elise. Okay, so what I'm going to do with her is I'm going to send her the Flatter's shortlist for new people. And that'll be in my to-do pile. So I've got a, play, I've got a playlist and the, it's called Flatter's shortlist for new people. It's on my channel. It's got uh, 20 to 25 videos ranging from five minutes to two hours covering just about every Flat Earth concept you can think of. Sunrise and sunsets and biblical and non-biblical and interviews. And it's just really great. And most of it has nothing to do with me. It's all just different. You know, I'll pick the best of the best that's out there, at least the introduction videos. If you want to show people how to get into Flat Earth, that's what I would point them at. Of course, if they know nothing about Flat Earth whatsoever, and you guys know where I'm going with this, I would highly recommend that they uh, watch Behind the Curve, the movie, the documentary, which was made by globalists. But it covers both sides. It's a really fair look. And I think it's a fantastic way to plant the seed. Then after you see that, then have them go to the Flat Earth shortlist. How about that? Okay, this is a big one, and I'm going to read it, so bear with me. It's called A Flat Earth Observation. Mark, I thought to take a quick moment, well, I don't think it's that quick considering, you probably started off thinking it was going to be quick, and then you just kept writing, and I, and I fully appreciate it because flat earthers get really enthusiastic when they write. I thought to take a quick moment to write to you today to make an observation that I just now noticed. Perhaps you already have. Firstly, I'm still very much mired in this fascinating and complex subject, sort of in the drinking from the fire hose stage, you might say. So assuming you receive this email, I would simply ask that you don't share it or mention me by name. Well, I'm going to share it. I mean, I don't, if you wrote me, it's fair game, but I'm not going to mention you by name. 
uh, any such thing. Not to, not that my revelation is extraordinary, nor that you've not certainly taken notice of what I wanted to say, but I'm still in the WTF phase and simply want to try to continue to wrap my mind around this seemingly unbelievable, if not totally surreal subject. Uh, by way of quick introduction, I graduated from West Point with degrees in economics and systems engineering. I subsequently served as a pilot in the army for five years. I mention this only to reference both my experience as a pilot, as well as to allude to the fact that although I don't pretend to be the smartest man on planet earth, uh, see, see what you did there. I'm certainly no dummy. There are many things that point for me to the validity of the FE model, the best of which is simply the science. The observable straightness of observation sans declination cannot be reasonably explained using current globe models. And I really don't know how mainstream science is refuting this other than, of course, their ridiculous mirage explanations, which I think we can agree are laughable. And their silence on the topic seems deafening. In answer to the question why, I take the spiritual viewpoint. I refer to myself as a Bible man. I stay away from the term Christian, which I think has been corrupted and whose association I do not wish to take part. I meet very few Christians who I'm, whom I like, admire, or respect, and who, in my opinion, and in comparison with scriptural doctrine and instruction, live up to the connotation that the name would imply. I cannot help to find in F.E., however, a wonderful fit for something that you probably heard of called the Great Deception. This is described in the Bible as a deception of such cunning that if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. I have been fascinated by this deception for years upon years and have been stalwartly trying to see behind the curtain as it were in order to anticipate its coming. I have been... I have even written long and detailed articles on the subject inclusive of everything from the mark of the beast to false alien invasions. For me, however, as I look at flat earth, I can hardly conceive of a more perfect deception upon the masses of earth by what I will colloquially, colloquially, yeah, sorry, I don't use that. I know, I know what, it's, what it means, but, and conveniently call here the devil. I was listening to you speak with Russell Brand, and you were asked this very question of why. I was a bit disappointed, not personally in you, of course, but just in general, that you didn't really touch upon what this deception does to the spiritual psyche of the human race. The difference in believing that we are the immovable center of all creation, fixed and focused, and as it turns out, biblically detailed and described, versus the notion that we are simply a, spe a speck of space dust spit out by some cosmic explosion and hurtling across an immeasurable universe in a futile attempt to validate our lives in the face of our meagerness is for me the very foundation of a spiritual deception. As an aforementioned Bible man, the ramifications of this deception are in evidence. So, being a man of belief and the immutable concepts of spiritual good and evil. It was Christ who told us that we didn't war against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and high and spiritual places. I often take notice of the world around me in order to make discernment about what is good and what is evil. This is the devil's world. I'm speaking, of course, as a believer here. We know that both scripturally as well as empirically, the observation of the world around us being without refutation of the conclusion. So when something is vilified relentlessly and without a seemingly strong cause, I take notice and intrinsically ask why. For this reason, I am pro-cannabis and psychedelics such as the mushroom. Though I have used both in varying degrees, I partake very rarely now, so my position isn't one of endorsement for personal reasons, but rather to ask the question, how in the hell do governments all over the planet outlaw a plant? How is a fungus that springs from the earth made illegal when the fungus right beside it I can put upon my salad? In such things, I see malevolent purpose because I think such things are being kept from the people because their effects are designed specifically to help us in this spiritual battle through health of the mind and body and revelation upon the spiritual plane. I mention the above only because I see the exact same thing happening with flat earth. And like the aforementioned, it further clues me into the validation of the observation. Well, 
I certainly didn't mean to take so long <laughs> to get to such a simple point. By the way, this is a massive paragraph he just wrote here. Uh, but I've never really discussed this topic with anyone before now, and so writing to one of the leaders in the field, I suppose I became a bit verbose, forgive me, but my observation today was quite simple, yet quite telling. As I said, this topic is still relatively new to me, but something today was so obvious and striking. Like most, I initially began my investigation into the subject using YouTube. I admit that most of my uh, research is done in this way because there are so many incredible researchers out there doing their due diligence upon these many varied topics, the moon hoax, 9-11, etc., that all I really need to do is validate the researcher themselves and, having done so, receive the brilliance of the briefing for which they have toiled so arduously. When I first started my YouTube journey down the rabbit hole, I could type in flat earth or flat earth proof or any other such uh, search terms tr trying to find videos in order to expand my understanding of the topic. And immediately I would receive in the top recommended videos, many such lectures and results of pro flat earth researchers such as yourself. Admittedly, I haven't revisited this outline for quite some time now. Life's many concerns and distractions merely getting in the way. Today, however, I had several hours to sit down and both review what I had previously learned as well as a chance to catch up on any new data that might have been garnered since my last inquiries into the topic. Now, however, when you try to find videos that are pro-flat earth, they are seemingly deliberately hidden regardless of the search terms you enter. Type in flat earth proof and you only get anti-flat earth rhetoric. I would have to scroll far, far down in order to get anything that was close to what I was looking for, and many of the videos rated higher, whose title would allude to a pro-flat earth opinion, would prove themselves only to be sophomoric and immature satire on the flat earth movement and those who ascribe it. To me, these lastly mentioned videos seem a way to capture and dissuade the newly interested flat earther by capturing them before they can really get into the topic and make them feel stupid for their interest therefore for uh, i'm sorry thereby driving them from the topic altogether for me this is very much like the cannabis issue that i mentioned earlier i asked myself why is this subject being so vehemently attacked and ridiculed if it is so stupid to be almost unmentionable why is the President of the United States mentioning this with derision in front of every country on Earth at the United Nations? Why does NASA take time to dedicate a complete refutation of FE on their website if it is merely a collection of tinfoil hat-wearing Dungeons & Dragons players gathering in their mother's basements? Why? I told you at the beginning of this rapidly emerging tome that it was the simple science behind the observations that I found irrefutable and totally, I'm sorry, truly brought me into the interest of the fold. But it is this strange attack and active dismissal of the topic. With one breath, they say it's ludicrous and so without merit that it isn't deserving of a reasonable discourse. Yet with another breath, heave and rage against a revelation that they claim is laughable, that serves only to pique my interest ever the more. Voltaire said that if you wish to know who controls you, Look only so far as he whom you cannot criticize. I find relevance in his words and the above observation. I sense a desperation emerging, the last gasp of a secret soon to be revealed, a sin sung from the rooftops. It is, I confess, most exciting. Peace, and I won't give out his name. You know what? That email is wonderful. And I think, I don't, I don't think we can follow that. No, nobody's going to be able to follow that, that email. So we're going to end on that one. Uh, thank you for everybody that has emailed so far and everyone's going to email in the future. Remember, you can send your questions, comments, and requests to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.